So remember the days when all you needed for gaming was an i5? Well, those days are thankfully back thanks to the new i5 11400F. This thing is going for just $175 US, so basically the same price as a Ryzen 5 3600, but at the same time, it is much, much faster. So when Intel are so focused on marketing the higher tier, expensive, overclockable products that no one really wants to be honest, like the 11900K and 11600K, they should really be focusing on this gem right here. You wouldn't believe the game gaming performance that you're getting here for this amount of money, so let's take a look. So unlike the rest of Intel's current lineup, and honestly AMD's lineup as well, you don't have to pay a whole lot here to get an excellent gaming CPU. The i5-11400F comes in at over $120 cheaper than a Ryzen 5 5600X, and about $100 cheaper than the overclockable i5-11600K. Now that is a big chunk of savings that you can then throw towards a faster graphics card, which is going to have a much bigger impact on your overall gaming performance. So I guess that kind of sums up the review then. Grab the 11 100F, use the included stock cooler and plug it into a B560 motherboard and you're set. Well, not exactly. Despite the i5-11400F only having a 65 watt TDP, which in Intel's language also means that the processor consumes about 65 watts at load, the i5-11400F can consume significantly more than that if you let it. And in my opinion, this is the way that you should run the 11400 because more power equals more performance. And the difference between restricting it to 65 watts and then uncapping it is pretty significant, especially when you take a look at the clock speeds. At just 65 watts, we're looking at a sustained all-core clock speed as low as 2600 megahertz in Blender, but uncapped, sitting around 140 watts, the 11400F sits at 4200 megahertz. If you want, you can of course configure a power limit between these two values if you wanted, like 100 watts or 120 watts, and that would be recommended if you are really limited on cooling. Speaking of which, as you could imagine, running the CPU at 140 watts easily outpaces the capability of the included stock cooler. If you were to run the 11400F, F with an unlimited power limit and with the stock cooler, the CPU will maintain as high of a clock speed as it can at 90 degrees C. On an open test bench, that means around 3600 MHz, but for a closed case, expect that value to be quite a bit lower. So if you're looking at getting the i5-11400F, don't expect the stock cooler to get you very far. If you want to get the most performance that you can out of it, even a single tower air cooler will allow you to run the full power and boost clocks that are on offer here. I will also mention that B560 motherboards do appear to have the the same power limit unlocking capabilities that you'd expect on Z590, which honestly is really great to see. That makes a B560 motherboard the perfect pair for this CPU in my opinion. Unlock the power limit, bolt on a decent cooler, and don't forget to enable XMP for memory overclocking here as well. So let's take a look at how this thing actually performs, and for 175 bucks, the performance seriously cannot be beaten. Kicking things off with production workloads first, in Cinebench we're looking at about equal performance to a 10600K overclock to 5 gigahertz, which is really impressive given the price and power differences. Single threaded performance in Cinebench is also really respectful, about tying the i9-10900K from last generation, although the Ryzen 5600X does have some ground here. In fact, the 5600X and 11600K are undoubtedly the fastest 6 core CPUs, I think we all expected that. But the question is just how much faster are they for that extra $100 plus? The answer is not a whole lot, in fact there are some workloads here with the 11400 F is faster than the 5600X, such as in Adobe Premiere Pro. And then you take a look at workloads like Blender and the two are basically tied. The gap is even more surprising when it comes to gaming. Here's the i5-11400F versus the more expensive 11600K across 10 games at 1080p using an RTX 3080. Really, the differences are very, very slim. And if we remove Rainbow Six Siege at the top to take a better look at the rest of the results here, we can see that there really isn't that much of a difference here between the two. At most, the 11600K has a 6% performance lead in GTA 5 and Warhammer Vermintide 2, but in most games, the difference is just too close to justify paying the extra for the 11600K. Versus the 5600X, it's hit and miss depending on the game. Generally, the 5600X is the faster CPU by a similar margin that we saw with the 11600K, but there are some games where the 11400F is actually a bit faster. I'll also mention that there is a difference when it comes to gaming performance running the 11400F at 65 watts compared to running it untapped. It's not a 
massive difference in most games since not all cores are fully loaded in gaming anyway, but it's enough for me to recommend uncapping the power limit in the BIOS and bolting on a decent cooler. In fact, in Death Stranding, which is a bit more CPU intensive, there was a 13% performance difference between those power limit settings. So really, there isn't much more that you need to know here. The i5-11400F actually dominates for the price that you pay. It's the ultimate value gaming CPU that you can buy right now. At a similar, sometimes even lower price than the Ryzen 5 3600, you're getting significantly more gaming performance in those higher CPU load games. And I think one thing that I want to add here before closing off is that it's not even a case of how much performance you'll be losing by not going with a 5600X or 11600K. By saving that $100 plus, you will end up with a faster gaming system. That $100 is enough to go from a 3060 to a 3060 Ti, or even a 3060 Ti to a 3070. And so you do actually end up with a faster gaming system in the end by going with the 11400F. Or of course, you could just save that extra $100 and have a build that is about equally as fast anyway, and you have that extra $100 to do whatever you want with. Personally, I'm a big fan of this CPU for gaming builds. I just think it makes so much sense in terms of where it allows you to allocate the extra budget for your gaming PC. I really think that 11400F with a B560 motherboard, fast memory, decent cooler, and then the fastest GPU that you can afford in your budget is pretty much the way to go for a gaming PC build right now. Honestly, I think that covers pretty much everything. If you're interested in picking this one up, I will have a link down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.